keyboard, what keys are pressed on, or what buttons are pressed on the gamepad, and what buttons are pressed on the mouse if you wish to add mouse support. Then we need to update the game objects according to that, and then update graphics. So, let's discuss the update game objects and graphics part in depth. We'll need to do quite a bit of stuff in this area. We need to update our objects based on the input, or time, if it is computer controlled. We should apply physics, if available, as well. Physics applies to every object in the world. And you can have the option to add physics in your game, or just no physics. For So for this game, there will be no physics, so we do not need to do that now. But in the future games, we will be adding physics. After you update your object's position, you should check collision. So when you update every object in the game, their new position, apply the physics if physics is available, and you check if this object collides with that object. And if it does, set it in removal queue, which we'll go into later. The final step in the game loop is to update graphics. Every time the game loops, the screen is cleared, and then stuff is redrawn on the game screen. So you need to redraw the objects, and redraw everything you want the user to see. Now part 3 game art, we did that in page 6, and you can use Microsoft Paint, and we already discussed that, but you can use Photoshop or any of the other imaging software out there. And for this game, it's just a single pixel. You do not need anything more, but however, you can change it if you want to later. But for now, keep it simple. So that's it for this tutorial. Next tutorial, we'll do section 3, which is the game engine, and we'll go into the coning by then. Hope to see you next time.